I love it. And I love it when we uh, get visitors from outside of Kenya because it gives us such a great perspective on where we are and our future. It is my absolute pleasure now to welcome to the stage Dr. Mamike. She's an amazing woman with a really amazing story to tell and she's been inspiring great women in Africa. She's here looking gorgeous, everybody. Please give her a hand. Hello. Hey. Hi, how, how are, you? are you? You look so great. Thank you, so do you. It is a pleasure so to you. meet you. Thank you. Have a seat. Thanks. Welcome to Kenya. Thank you so much. Is this your first time? No. Okay. And it won't be my last. And it won't be your last. Tell me a little bit about, I guess, your connection uh, between South Africa and Kenya first. The connection between South Africa and Kenya is that here in Kenya, we're working with a group of amazing people. And I'm glad to say majority women who have the ICANN Maxwell Kenya. And people can go onto the website and take a look at the ICANN Maxwell Kenya and see the things that we're doing. We're bringing about leadership in the community and in, in East Africa. Our goal is to be able to impact all of East Africa. You have an amazing story uh, and, and just looking at your breadth of work and looking at everything that you've done, mm -hmm. it's a beautiful journey. As a young lady, uh, sort of wanting to have impact, uh, tell me a little bit about how you started out. Oh, I started out with, um, born in Soweto, okay. grew up there, home a little bit dysfunctional, and anybody who knows, who's been in a dysfunctional environment, you know that you get unsettled, yeah. you get uneasy, you're not sure of yourself, but God always has it under control, always. I left home, went to the States to go to school, which is where I met my husband, a very handsome, tall young man. Yes, he's right here. <laughs> Can we just, yeah, he's sitting in our audience. Hi, good morning, how are you? Fantastic. Uh -huh. and, and in meeting him, he was a speaker. I believe he was born speaking, you know, and I wasn't a speaker, and he saw what was in me. He said, well, let's develop it. And he supported me, enrolled me in a class to learn the techniques. And um, I struggled though, yeah. going to school. I really struggled. I didn't have the finances. I would go to school. A lot of people, it takes them four years to finish their degree. It took me six years. And simple reason being one semester I was in school working, another semester I was out um, back in school, and another semester out working. So, you know, I had to do so many different things. I was a cake decorator, I was a domestic worker. Um, and a lot of people ask me, if you had known then what would happen to you, would you have done it? Yes, I would have. It's made me who I am. Right. It's not pleasant to choose that, mm -hmm. but it's crafted me into who I am. It's shaped me and molded me into the person that I am. And today I'm really, really passionate about seeing women come to their full potential. Yeah. And, and you may ask, why women? Well, simply because women in most areas it seems like we're an inconvenience. You know, there's leadership and then there's women's leadership. And then there's this and then there's women's that. But if you go back, honestly, if you go back into the Bible and you take a look at the abilities and the capabilities that we have, we are equal to men. Right. God said it at the beginning. He blessed them both and he said to them, be fruitful, multiply, have dominion and replenish the earth. And so that blessing, I always want to let women know that God's original blessing on us was his final decision. We are still blessed and we can still be leaders. I love that. I absolutely love that. You, your, your story, as you've said, uh, was it all rosy, especially in the beginning, mm -hmm. tried out for a scholarship. There's been challenges. Yeah. Had to do uh, the work that you've just talked about. Yes. I think a lot of people, and especially young women today, will look at your story and, and see this and, and see yeah. you know the beautiful resume. Um, but talk to us a little bit about, I guess, resilience and hard work and, and, and sticking in there for what you believe in. Oh, you have to. Yeah. You have, nothing comes easy. Um, and, and as women, most times we are intimidated, honestly, uh, because of the things that I've mentioned before. But you have to stick it and you have to work hard. Uh, our brokenness in many areas is what we need to build our health on to build our wellness on, to build ourselves on. One of the things that I always say, I, I heard, I think I heard somebody say this, and I copy what people say yeah. a lot. If it works for <laughs> me, I copy it. Right. But I heard somebody talk about birds are not afraid of brokenness because all nests are built of broken branches. Oh, I love that. 
And I'm like, that works. Yeah. So women have to work. Sometimes we have to work extra hard for one opportunity that is given to men, for three opportunities that are given to men, only one is given to women. Right. So we constantly have to claw. I'm sure that you are aware of that whole thing where they talked about glass ceiling for women. We don't have a glass ceiling as much anymore because that has been cracked by many women who have made it to the top. However, for women, there's a new phenomenon and it's called the labyrinth. The labyrinth is simply a system where you don't, it's a maze. Okay. You don't make it to the final goal by walking straight. Most men, they know, here's my trajectory. I'm going to start in this organization. This is what I'm going to do. I'm going to climb up the ladder, not so for women. For women, we know there's a goal. We know that we can get there, but the road is winding. You have to walk this way and sometimes you come across a roadblock because some people has decided women are not smart enough, women can't handle it, then you have to turn around and you have to recalibrate, find another way to go around it. So we are constantly finding ways to go around and that is hard work, we, you cannot give up, you know? And so to get to the top as women, it takes hard work. It does, absolutely. There's this book that I love and I'm going to share this clip uh, uh, in just a second. Um, lean in. Mm -hmm. uh, oh yes, and, yeah, isn't that great? Oh yeah, that's and it's, a great I love book. the following now that that it's uh, picking up on social media mm -hmm. and all these women who've decided to to follow this up. Um, talking, of course, about this stereotype that you know women are their you know worst enemies, and yes. it's it's not true anymore. I don't feel, uh, and this book and this movement of sort of find that woman in your environment, in your industry, in mm -hmm. your community, mm -hmm. and lean in and, yes. and see what you can do together. Yeah. Um, how do you, in your own work, advocate for that? Uh, and what can you say oh about the gosh. stereotype? Oh, I do advocate for it a lot. Yeah. Women, see, one of the things that we are doing, particularly if you look at African women, you and I are women in Africa, we're African women. We follow a lot and we believe a lot when it's said by somebody else besides us. Yeah. Leaning is an amazing book, but African women have been leaning in since the beginning. I've been leaning in on my mom, my grandmother, my aunties, and people around me. Um, the African fiber of society is such that it enforced us leaning in. Yeah. This whole thing of cat fight among women is not African. It's a Western concept. I mean, you know, as Westerners can stay in the same place and you don't even know your neighbors. Right. You can stay in the same neighborhood for years and years and you never meet each other simply because it's their culture. But our culture is a lenient culture. And the unfortunate part is that with the advent of technology and modernization, the African woman has sort of walked away from being a truly African woman and we've tried to embrace this concept right. that then make us look like you and I are fighting each other. We are competing with one another because that's what Europeans do. But our interest, even with I can Maxwell Africa, is to get to a point where we are called I can leadership company in Africa right. because this is, an, this is an African leadership. It's a leadership that says that we have a rich heritage, we have a rich culture, we have learned. This whole leaning thing is a mentorship issue. Yeah. Who has been mentoring women for years and years? African women have been mentoring each other. You know how to cook, you know how to raise babies. Right. In fact, our culture is even to where when I have babies and I am at home, for the first 10 days, I'm not allowed to do anything. Why? Because the old grannies, the old mothers who have the knowledge are the ones who come in and they help me take care of the baby. Yeah. They teach me how to take care of my body. We've been leaning in for a long time. I love it. I absolutely love it. Um, we have to, I guess, have the realistic conversation of where we are as a continent when mm -hmm. it comes to representation. Um, I Just recently, our very own uh, Cabinet Secretary for Foreign Affairs, Amina Mohamed Wren, for the AU, uh, very huge position, mm -hmm. didn't get it though. And I, I noted with some concern about, I guess, the conversation that followed online. Um, and of course, about the states with Hillary Clinton mm -hmm. and, and just globally, and then coming to Africa and looking at where we are very patriarchal like society how do we start to break to break down the, this conversation and and make re representation a reality across the board how we start to break it down honestly is by us as women first being emotionally intelligent okay one of the biggest problems that i find is that because we are not intelligent in engaging 
in knowing how to read emotions. One of the biggest drawbacks is feminism. Okay, really? Yes, it's a drawback. Okay. Because feminism says I want to be equal to a man. I already am. I don't want to be. I already am. And then it says, let me be like a man, dress like a man, speak like a man, behave like a man. Mm -mm. I love being feminine. Yeah. I love my makeup. I love my jewelry. I love my soft speaking. I don't want to be shouting down a man's throat. I don't want to be, you know, being aggressive towards a man. But I want a man to recognize me for who I am. I am me. I am equal, although different from you. So we need to start breaking those stereotypes of wanting to be like men because we are not men. Yeah. And then secondly, being able to engage them in a way that they will pay attention to us instead of saying, ah, it's women again, leave them, it's the cause of women. Once we start doing this new movie that is out, and I just forget the title now, it eludes my mind, but this movie that is out about the women who made a difference, particularly black women who made a difference in NASA. Hidden figures. Hidden figures. Yeah. That's how we need to do it. Women need to start doing what they need to do and they will recognize it. Yeah. It may take some time, but it does not mean that if I am not recognized, I am not making a difference. You can choose not to recognize me. It's your option. You know, it's your prerogative to do that. But if I am making concrete differences and changes it's going to be felt and you will have eventually to reckon with the fact that you know what these women are doing it absolutely yeah. <laughs> i love it you are also an author mm -hmm. uh, and you've co-written uh, co a book with your with husband, husband as well yes. can, can we get a microphone down here uh, so i can just ask him about that but tell me about your your book your your first book and then you'll tell me about the book with your husband my first book um, who's your daddy? Who's your daddy? Yeah, that's, yeah, I wanted you the, to say it. And that's the <laughs> title that I chose simply because I realized that a lot of Africans don't know who their daddies are. It's, it's a small number of us who grew up with our fathers in the home, not because fathers have abundance. Sometimes it's because of the work situation. In South Africa, for instance, mm -hmm. men were taken out from their homes to work in the mines. Um, they were taken off of their homes to work in areas where they were far away from their families. Right. And children grew up not knowing who their fathers are. Now it's very important for a child to grow up with both a male and a female figure in the house. And I was just the, in that book trying to say to women, who's your daddy? If you have not, and men, yeah. not women only, men and women, if you don't know who your daddy is, find the next person who can best be your daddy. There's a saying that we were talking about earlier on, that Hillary Clinton actually made popular, it takes a village to raise a child. Yes. That's not an American saying. No. That's an African, an African doing. Yeah, yeah. We've been doing it for years and years and years. And just saying, let's stop looking at what we did not have and look at where are we going now. Now who's, who can you recognize in your vicinity, in your environment as your daddy? For me, the first father that I really recognized as being a true father was God. Yeah. God to me was my daddy. So I'm asking to different people, who's your daddy? Yeah. Who do you consider to be your father? And get whole from recognizing who your father is and walking in your father's footsteps. I love that. Right, so the second book you co-wrote with your husband, Good yes. Morning. Tell Good us morning. your name, sir. Uh, and David Molapo. A amazing pleasure to meet you. Thank you for being here. Thanks for the opportunity. Wonderful wife <laughs> you have. Um, t talk to us a little bit about, I guess, this book uh, that you co-wrote together. Sure. Uh, under ICANN Maxwell Leadership, and as you know, we now have a, a branch in Kenya, ICANN Maxwell Leadership Kenya. It is a book about relationships because we realize that the greatest joys in Africa are in relationships. Yeah. But the greatest sorrows are also experienced in relationships. So because I'm a professional dancer, my wife and I were dancing, and then we were doing the tango. Mm -hmm. So we co-wrote the book, It Takes Two to Tango. I love it. It deals with relationships, whether people are single, available, or still taking tenders, or people are married, you know. Yeah. There are certain principles that are universal, and obviously then from the mistakes that I have made as a man, because nobody coached and mentored me on how to be a husband, yeah. And my wife added value. And this year we are celebrating 30 years of marriage. Amazing. That's so great. That is amazing. Co-writing a book with your husband. Yeah. I'm sure that is a story, a book in itself. Um, but, but tell me it about that. It wasn't so difficult. Okay. It really wasn't so difficult. How was he it? was he was the brains behind what 
you know, goes into the book. Right. He always does. Because in our marriage, one of the things that we've recognized, we work off of each other's strengths. And so his strength is really doing stuff like that. Okay. Have the concept, put the thing together, and then say, look, because we've agreed on writing a book, so I'm thinking here, this is what could go in here. What do you think? Yeah, I think so. No, I don't think so. I think maybe we should move it here. Yeah. And we work it that way. For me to sit down and, and try and, and write a book on my own that way, where we said we we're going to co-author the book, he's the better writer. Yeah. So put the concept together and let's work on fleshing it out. And that's how it worked it out. It wasn't really difficult. Right. I, I won't say to you, we fought, we had disagreements, we had this. We, we had difference of opinion and we worked through the difference of opinion. And, and the book was born. Yeah, the, book, the book was, was born. born. Um, as we wind up, I think uh, I want to talk about the fact that, um, and I, I, I think this is a global issue, relationships, marriage, um, being singlehood and yeah. all of that very close to everyone's heart mm -hmm. because everyone's searching for answers and and sometimes it can seem like a lot yeah. looking at this book that you wrote together um, tell me a little bit about sort of just being able to sort of be calm about where you are in your marriage regardless of how it's going or in your relationship or if you're single yeah. just sort of accepting your situation yeah. see one of the biggest problems is that people get into a relationship with the hope that the relationship will complete them. So I get in a relationship with my husband with the hope that he will fulfill me and complete me. Right. But if I walk in unfulfilled and incomplete, that's what I'm bringing into the marriage. That's what I'm bringing into the relationship and it's not going to bode well for the relationship. So we always encourage people to really be yourself, be happy with who you are, develop yourself, study. If you have to study, study. If you have to get a career, get a career. Do whatever you need to do to become full. Be happy with yourself. And then say, I am a whole person coming in together with this other whole person. And together we will then complement one another. Relationships about, is about complementing, not completing one another. A lot of, we, we were crafted, you know, and it's our belief. It's my belief that we were crafted and shaped for relationship. Why do you think that people want to get married so much? Single people like, oh, if I can just get the one. Because there's something in you that has been crafted for a relationship with another person. It may be relationship with friends. It may be relationship with significant others in, as in marriage. But we are all crafted for relationship. So don't go into your relationship hoping that the relationship will give you what you're not bringing into it. Go into a relationship hoping that the relationship can hone what I already bring right. in. It can kind of sharpen what I already bring in with me. Okay. And we can be whole together as a couple. And if you're single, please be happy and satisfied in your singleness. Okay. Because some people will stop growing and developing. Why? Because I'm waiting for the one. Mm. Develop. Grow. Get all that you can get as a single person so that when you do meet the other person, you guys can start your life and say, now we're going to do us. Right. Because I've done me, you've done you, now we're going to do us. I love that. It is an absolute pleasure to have you. Isn't she great, everybody? Right? Thank you. She's awesome. Thank you. I appreciate it. We'll connect you, of course, to these wonderful people who are really transforming this continent one movement at a time. Log on to social media platforms to find information on that. But we've loved having you. Thank you so much for joining us. Thank you. Really great, Thank great. Thank you yeah, so much. To appreciate you. it. Thank All right. You. Okay.